I'm pretty sure you have heard about uh, beacon object files uh, or BOFs and uh, an above loader used in Cobalt Strike. Uh, so BOF loader is an implementation of a dedicated loader for COF files, uh, also known as uh, common object file format files. Okay. And they are sort of intermediary object files uh, generated by a compiler and then used uh, by a linker to create a final executable uh, like PE, uh, for example. Okay. Both became very popular since uh, their inception because they allow you to create an executable object that could be loaded directly into the um, memory of the process and execute it. Okay. And they are uh, also quite small, especially in comparison to uh, reflective DLLs, which could be 20, 30 times or even uh, more uh, larger, although BOFs are not uh, as small as shellcodes. Uh, I would say they, they sit somewhere in between uh, and, uh, and have a significant advantage over the shellcode because you can write them in high level programming language like C or C++. Okay. So in other words, BOFs are almost like a shellcode written in C, but they need a dedicated loader to execute them. And now we are going to dive into a COF format and see how to parse uh, the data contained in them. In MSDN, you can find a, a document describing all the details of uh, P fo format as well as uh, COF files. Okay. And the structure of these files are pretty much similar because they are using similar uh, um, metadata or meta structures describing you know, all the information contained in them. To parse a COF file, we need several of them. Okay? We need, uh, we need a, a header file, okay? which contains several fields. Okay? And this is pretty much similar to the uh, P, P header file. Okay. We also would need uh, a section table. Okay. Uh, table. Okay. Um, a section table contains uh, the that kind of you know metadata. And this is as well similar to what you would find in PE file. Okay, and I will show it to you in a second. Uh, we also need a symbol table. Um, so let's see, symbol table for cough. And cough uh, symbol table structure contains the name, uh, section number, type, and, and other fields. Okay. In the following sections of the document, you will find more details about all these all these fields. Okay. Um, for our purposes, I have uh, a dedicated uh, header file containing all these structures. Okay. So we have a, a cof a file header, section he uh, structure, relocation because we are going to de uh, deal with re relocations as well and the cough symbol okay and all of these four structures are needed to parse the cough uh, but i also uh, defined another additional structure i, I call it cough mem section uh, structure which will hold only uh, relevant information that is needed to uh, parse and actually load the cough into the memory of the process and then execute it okay um, so let me first let let's compare uh, this information with how the PE file looks like. So let me load up a, a notepad. So let's go to file header and compare it. So we have machine uh, section count, sec number of sections, timestamp, pointer to symbol table. Uh, number of symbols. So this is pretty much the same kind of structure. Okay. Uh, what about section headers? So we have raw address, raw size, uh, characteristics, pointer to relocations, number of line numbers. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much also the, 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 the same thing as we, we have 
in the uh, in the p file and the call file as well uh, what about the symbol table so the symbol table in p files is not present in most cases it is set to zero as you can see here uh, but in uh, but in the call files uh, it is uh, pretty significant okay for our parser we are going to use a small example uh, code which is pretty much uh, similar to what you would write for the BOF okay so for COBOL strike so the format is really uh, really the same it it doesn't support any uh, intrinsic COBOL strike in intrinsic functions like uh, beacon printf for example okay but other other um, other code is really much pretty much the same so this example test code will so the go function is our main function as with boffs and so we are going to print some values from the global variable do some math operations on, on it and also call call a testing function which will resolve the address of the zw add boot entry function from ntdll and then print it on the screen okay so basically super simple code okay so let's compile this. And let me first show you the information using dump bin headers and symbols from test O uh, because um, let me first show you the compile batch what we are doing here. So we are compiling the Cafe Biba, so this is our parser. And we're also compiling uh, the test.c, but we are only compiling this. The Cafe Biba is actually being linked as well. So we, in the result, we get the, the full PE uh, executable. And for the test.c, we just only get the cough file, okay? Um, so let's see the information from the dump bin okay so what do we've got here we have uh, so uh, we have eight sections in our test uh, call file uh, a pointer to a symbol table we have uh, 23 in hex number of symbols uh, the first section is uh, directive this is related to the uh, the linker okay uh, the next one is debug uh, containing debug information uh, initialized data and uh, so, sorry uninitialized uh, data and so on okay after that we have a cough symbol table okay with some uh, extensive information about the symbols where they are used and what are the offsets etc okay we are going to cover this information uh, from the Cafe Biba parser, okay? So let's uh, run it. Oh, actually, let's first take a look at the source code because uh, it's not very complex. So what we do first, we uh, load up the file into the memory, we call parse cough function on that loaded uh, data and then we unlo uh, unload the, uh, the, mm, the data so cough uh, a parse cough function uh, what it does it takes the cough uh, file header and just parses it and prints the information from that then we uh, allocate some additional memory uh, at a table of uh, cough mem, mem section uh, structures which will contain only information about uh, the data we are interested in and we, which is actually needed for loading okay it is uh, it is not necessary to do that like that although uh, from the educational perspective I think it's more readable although as I said it's uh, uh, sort of redundant uh, the next uh, thing we do we parse the the sections so we go through all the sections we extract 
uh, each section and, and parse that and store some information in our uh, temporary um, array of, of structures. Okay. And then print, print the data out on the screen. And we also check if there is any, any data in a structure. Okay. And if so, we print, print this data in a specific format with this function. Okay. So it will print the data in the hexadecimal format as well as printable characters. All right. Uh, and after that, we also uh, get information about the relocations. So uh, this loop will uh, get all the relocations for the specific section. And finally, we get the uh, cough symbol table and we parse that and print it out on the screen. Okay. This is nothing fancy. We're just, you know, going through the file, reading some information in the structure and then print it out on the screen. All right. So let's run it on our test. Oh, all right. So as you can see, the format is pretty much similar to what we've seen with dump bin, but it contains some uh, additional information. Okay. So uh, for for the so we have eight sections as we had in the, in the dump bin uh, number of sections thirty five uh, this is decimal okay not hex in hex uh, the section number uh, zero it's a directive used as I said used by the linker okay uh, during the linking so in the final PE file uh, this information will be so to speak lost. Uh, the debug information, this is also something we can skip. Um, the uninitialized uh, data section, uh, which is, it doesn't contain any data, as you can see here, uh, because all the data here is zero, although you can see that the size of the raw data is four, okay? The next one is text section, so containing our code, and this is how it looks like. And we also have a number of relocations. Okay. So additionally, we have a order relocation that needs to be done uh, when this section is going to be loaded into the memory. Okay. All when the linker is trying to produce a, a, a final PE executable, it will also uh, take this information and store it in the appropriate uh, section in a PE file. Um, X data and P data, these are sections containing uh, basically exception related information, uh, which is not very interesting from the parsing perspective, uh, although it contains quite crucial information for uh, unwinding the stack during the execution. Uh, the data uh, section, so it contains the initializing uh, data. Okay, so we see a few strings uh, here. Okay, and the final, the checksums, uh, we, this section can be also uh, skipped. Okay, and now we, we get to symbol table and how to read this information. Okay, so in the name column, we, we, you get a symbol string. Okay, in the section column, you get information where the specific uh, symbol is uh, in which section it is used okay and additionally a uh, value uh, column also defines what what is the offset from the beginning of the section that this, this symbol is referring to okay so let's uh, let's go let's go one by one so uh, this one uh, directive is a storage class number three and if the storage class is three and the value is zero, this means this is the name of the section. Okay. And we can see this, that this is uh, number one. So if we scroll up and in our parser, Cafe Biba starts numbering sections from zero. So this means this is the, uh, this section. Okay. And this symbol. Uh, usually undefined means uh, checksums, so uh, not uh, relevant information for, for, from our perspective. Uh, name of the section as well, 
and we have tval okay and tval is from section 3 at offset 0 so let's go to section number 2 and this is our un uninitialized data okay so it means that there is some uh, value uninitialized which is referring to this and it has probably four uh, it is four byte long okay and we can actually verify that in here uh, which is int and it's tval right and it's a global um, the next ones are the external functions so they don't have any corresponding sections uh, um, assigned uh, and these are uh, functions which are being imported uh, externally uh, meaning from other modules like DLLs okay the next two are interesting so these are our internal functions testing and go uh, the storage uh, class is 2 and the type um, 32 or 20 in hex means this is a function and all, both of them are located in section 4 testing is at offset 0 go is at offset 70 in hex so let's go to section number 3 which is our text section so at offset 0 this is our testing function Okay, and at offset 70, this is our go function. Okay, all right. And these are uh, storage class 6, so these are just labels, uh, uninteresting for, for us. Um, the next one, unwind, uh, so as I, as I told you, number 6, uh, 5 and 6 uh, uh, sections, these are um, symbols related to unwinding the, uh, the stack. So uh, to cut the story short, uh, in 64-bit architecture, frame pointers uh, register cannot be used to parse all the par parameters, uh, local variables, etc. used by the functions okay, on the stack. Uh, it is simply unused. Uh, instead of that, all this information uh, is stored in uh, pData section of the PE file, okay? And this data gives you information about uh, how the stack is used by all the functions in the code, okay? Um, what else we got? We've got we've got uh, some symbols, okay? So let's uh, check check it, check it out. So it's uh, section number six, uh, sorry, number seven at offset 0 and this is 98179 okay so let's go to section number 6 it's data it's offset 0 it's a it's a string a z w add boot entry uh, string okay so if we take a look at the uh, this assembly so let me uh, refresh So we can see it here. This is the very same symbol, okay? And uh, so the address of that string is being loaded into RCX. And if we take a look at the source code, this is exactly uh, this line of the code, okay? Let's take a look at an another symbol from the list. So this is one is from the, mm, at offset 10 in hex so at, uh, at 10 we have this string which is anti dll and in this assembly it looks like uh, it's uh, 180 right this is correct 180 so 180 is being loaded into rcx uh, register and is then in the get module handle is being called so this is the pointer to a string um, passed as the first parameter for get module handle and this is exactly what we are doing here okay 
and other symbols you, you can go there as well uh, 186 so we should see 186 uh, where is it it's here so it's probably it printf so it's uh, it's probably this test value one let's verify that from that point so it's uh, 38 30 8 7 8 so this is this string for printf okay so as you can see extracting information from um, from the cough file is not very complicated okay